church service. I hope you're doing well. I'm Pastor Benny, and if you're joining us for the first time, thank you for being a part of this time with us as we learn and grow in God's Word together. Amen? Well, today we conclude our mini-series, Miracles Today. That's right, our theme, peace out. But before we get started, let's just uh, enter the Lord's presence. Let's just bow our heads right now. Father, we just thank you for your word, which you promised will not be returned void. We ask you to search our heart, our mind, our soul, our spirit, Lord. Let us truly receive a revelation of your word and truth, Lord. We thank you for this victory this day. In Jesus' name, and all the saints said, amen and amen. Peace out, folks. This was a phrase we used to use back in the day, and it meant several things. See you later, relax, chill, maybe even no worries. 
Jesus used a similar word. The Greek word he used was siopao, to calm a storm. That's what he used, to calm a storm, but also to calm his disciples. Siopao in the Greek means to be calm, be still, not agitated, quiet, silent. And my favorite, to hold one's peace. That's right. He uses this, in, this phrase in the middle of a storm, folks. And I'm talking about peace out in the middle of a trial, in the battle zone. You know, in those particular moments when things are out of control. Yes, when we are going through, through life's personal storms that make us cry out, Oh Lord, where are you? Those moments when you're wondering if God's even there. You ever experienced that? And God is saying, peace out. See your power. We just can't hear him sometimes. Like the disciples um, might be wondering uh, if God really cares about the stuff that they were going through. And it's not that, you know, you don't believe in God, folks. I'm going to say this again. When we're going through stuff and the storms in life and you're wondering, God, do you even care? It's not because we don't believe in God, because I'm sure that you do. God does care about us. We have a, a tendency to see our struggle, our heartbreak, our pain as punishment. That's right. And that is a, our first mistake because we open a door to the enemy. Folks, as children of God, we don't need to wait until our personal storms have passed in order to see and experience the light and peace of the Son of God. The Word of God, His truth, not only does it sustain us in the storm of life, but also opens our eyes to see Jesus. God's glory while we're going through them. So if you're thinking or saying, Lord, where are you? Why don't you do something about it? He's saying, see your pal. Peace out. You know, I know we want to everything now. You know, we always want everything in the moment. And a lot of times we don't realize this. But our expectations of God is nothing but a demand. Just to get what we want, when we want it, how we think we should get it, that's pride, folks. Believe it or not, when we're crying out, out of desperation, that reveals a lot about who we believe is really in charge and in control. And if we acknowledge him, seek him, and pray, God says, roger that. That's right. He hears us. So here's a Q&A question, because we won't be having a Q&A question after the sermon today, and you might want to find someone during the week to be able to have some of these Q&A discussions. And so why does he wait? Why does God wait till we get to a point of desperation? There's a reason, folks. I want us to turn to our Bibles in the book of Mark. And, and, and look what's taking place here with, this is one of Jesus' miracles. And, and now the disciples are in a panic when an unexpected storm hits. How many of us know about unexpected storms in life? Hard to ignore, right? When it hits us, we have no choice in the matter but to pay attention. There's one thing to see it coming from afar. Another thing when it comes out of nowhere. Let me tell you, if you don't already know this, panic can easily set it. That's right. I want you to turn your Bible to the book of Mark, chapter 4, verse 35 to 38. I'm using the Amplified version here. On the same day when evening had come, he said to them, let us go over to the other side of the Sea of Galilee. So leaving the crowd, they took him with them just as he was in the boat. 
and other boats were with him, and a fierce windstorm began to blow, and waves were breaking over the boat so that it was already being swamped. But Jesus was in the stern, asleep, with his head on the sailor's leather cushion. And they woke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care? We are about to die. Then he got up and he sternly rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Hush, be still, muzzled. And the wind died down as if it had grown weary. And there was a, at once a great calm, a perfect peacefulness. Jesus says to them, why are you afraid? Do you still have no faith and confidence in me? Think about what just took place here. Folks, looking for physical solution for spiritual problems won't work. Miracles are supernatural. As you heard Elder King and, and, and Lauren Essen explain in the first two sermons, as they, you know, eloquently described it, you know, it's about having faith, confidence, and trust in Jesus today. That's right. Miracles, according to the definition, uh, English definition, uh, a surprising and welcome event that is not, again, explicable by natural or scientific law. Because this comes from a, the work of a divine agency. I want you to turn your Bibles right now to the book of John, chapter 14, verse 27, the Amplified Version. It says, peace. This is Jesus talking. He says, peace I leave with you. My perfect peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. He said, do not let your heart be troubled. Nor let it be let and nor let it be afraid. He said, Let my perfect peace calm you in every circumstance and give you courage and strength for every challenge. Folks, keep in mind, not even Christians are exempt from the storms of life. They are they will happen. But Jesus promised the Holy Spirit. He promised that the Holy Spirit in us will remind us of everything he promised us. That he will give us the power and the strength to endure. Well, we're just talking about the deep and lasting peace, not like the world. Think about that a minute. And here's another Q&A question in case when you meet with someone this week and you can have a discussion. Ask yourself, what's the difference between the world's view of peace and God's view of peace. See, the world's view is absence of conflict. God's view is confident assurance in any circumstance. With Christ's peace, we don't have to stress. We have no need to fear the present or the future. Fear of uncertainty, doubt, sin, and all the other hostile forces that are waging war within us. Jesus promised to give us peace if we are willing to accept it from him. Another good Q&A question. How do we accept it from him? I want you to turn your Bible as Paul tells us in Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 through 7, the NIV version. He says, do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, Present your request to God and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. That's right. He's saying peace out. Don't stress out. He's got this. Folks, it's not, not enough to hear or read the word of God or even know it well. We must also put it into practice. So how do we go about putting it into practice? Folks, there are so many out there who want to attain his peace, 
but find it difficult. Find it difficult to make an effort. Not because they don't want, want to, but because of a combination of things. Procrastination, excuses, pride. No judgment, folks. Just telling the things that affect us that sort of rob us and steal us from receiving this peace. We may not even see, the, see it, but a storm may allow us to be humble. Humble enough to look up, to look for Jesus. Imagine what the disciples felt while they were in the storm, going through, and Jesus is just sound asleep, which you'll, you'll find in the book of Mark, chapter 4, verse 38, the NIV. It specifically says Jesus was in a stern, sleeping on a cushion. And the disciple woke him up, saying, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? Verse 35, in the book of Mark, chapter 4. This is how it says it in the beginning. He says, this happened on the same day, right after Jesus had been finished teaching and ministering on the parables. He taught four parables prior to getting in the boat. That's right. He taught the parable of the sower, the lamp on the stand, the parable of the growing seed, and the parable of the mustard seed. Then he took the disciples aside and explained it to them, what the parables meant. Which one of these parables that Jesus taught on would you say applied to the situation on that boat in the storm? You might want to, again, use that as part of your Q&A this week. Which one of those parables would you have applied in the situation? Now, the disciples, of course, the react with their reaction because of the distraction could have been caused, these distractions could have been caused because of the rumors surrounding the Sea of Galilee. And there were rumors out there about it. It could have been that because of their, their fear. Now, now this, this particular lake, which is 13 miles long and 8 miles wide, which was known for explosive, furious storms. And there are all the rumors and superstitions about demons were lurking in the deep because of all the damage those storms have done. So here's the disciples in the middle of a storm. They are crying out, Lord, can you do something about this? Lord, they cried out. Can you do something about my finances? My financial situation, my job, my relationship, my depression, these feelings of being stuck, whatever the circumstance, Lord. And here's an ouch moment. The who is more powerful than the what. I'm going to say that again. The who is more powerful than the what. So peace out. For those who don't know uh, the history of the church, uh, it went through some dark times, serious storms. A dark time for me for sure. This was directly connected to my own personal trials. It was like the perfect storm. Unexpectedly, my whole world came crashing down on me. The church, my church family, my family, my living situation, it affected every area of my life pretty much. And it was all going on at the same time. Not knowing where I was going to live with my kids. I mean, it was, the storm was real. I didn't even know if I was going to have a job. All I remember was I was coming down from the mountaintop, right, one day. Because I was, you know, ministering and you know, doing the work of the Lord, praying, teaching, baptizing. I mean, this was all going on upstate. And when I get back into the city one day, everything was just like falling apart. I ran right into the storm. The founding pastors and his husband and wife separated. Right before my eyes, a whole series of traumatic events followed. My own personal relationship was under attack. Pastors, elders, they couldn't help it. They were in the middle of the storm. 
It was a whirlwind. And I'm talking about a bombardment of things going on. And I'm like, what just happened? What is happening? Where did this all come from? It was so real. It was so fast. You didn't even give you a chance to react. It felt like the end of days, no doubt. Nothing I could do to stop it or to control it. It felt like I was about to drown with these feelings of hopelessness, fear, betrayal, and nothing in me wanted to do anything because I was numb. I didn't even want to read the word, not even pray. But I knew praying wasn't an option. I locked myself in a room and cried out, God, to help me. And I waited until I heard him speak to me. Today, I can tell you this. He is faithful. And he spoke to me that day. It was when I first realized that I grew up. That's right. Although I'm still growing, I might still have some moments when I'm fatigued. Two things to remember in a storm. He's in the storm with us. That's number one. That's right. Jesus is in the boat. And the second, he has a purpose for the storms in our lives. Can you remember those two things? Even though you can't see them in that moment, he's there. Mark 4.38a says Jesus was in the stern sleeping on a cushion while the storm was raging. He's like out, lights out. If we get caught up in the chaos, in the what of a storm, we'll forget who's in the boat with us. Remember the ouch moment. The who is more powerful than the what. Folks, don't forget who is in the boat with us. When we accept Jesus in our heart, guess who's in there? Who dwells in us? Think about that. During my dark times, the Lord first gave me a vision. A vision of a boat, which represented the church. And the boat was full of holes and was taken in water and about to sink. And the Lord told me, first plug in the holes in the boat and then take out the water. He wanted me to keep things afloat first. So I did. I learned to be obedient. That's right. That was the first thing I learned. That was my true peace. See, God uses adversity as a maneuver for spiritual growth. That's right. That's what God uses. All throughout the scriptures, God promises his presence. He's there for us, folks. I want you to turn to Deuteronomy chapter 31, verse 6, the NIV version. He says, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified because of them. For the Lord your God goes with you. He will never leave you, never forsake you. That's right. Joshua chapter 1, verse 5 through chapter 5. I mean, chapter 1, verse 5, the NIV version. He says, no one will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. As I will, was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave you, never forsake you. And Joshua 1, 9, the NLT version. It says, this is my command. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. That's right, church. Wherever you go, you're the church. This is the one that I hold on to most because this is the one the Lord told me to be strong and courageous. This is my command, he says. And 
I'm going to read some others. There's so many others. Psalm 23, 4, Matthew 28, 20. Over and over again, God promises to be present. Don't get so caught up in the what of the storm that you forget who's in the boat. And if you're suffering a loss, if, you're, if, if there's someone, uh, someone breaks your heart, if you lose your job, if you're concerned about health issues, if you end up coming home to an empty house or apartment, whatever it is, he will never leave you, never forsake you. Remember, Jesus never said we, he wouldn't exp we wouldn't experience storms. He didn't say we not. But he promised we'll never, we'll never be alone in a storm. Another good Q&A question that you want to have when you have a chance. Remember, it was Jesus who suggested to go to the other side, to Galilee. So why did Jesus allow the disciples to endure the storm? If not, for a reason. What better way to learn and grow? Some of them were professional fishermen, like Peter. What would you say they learned? 1 Peter 5, 7, NIV version. Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. In other words, transfer the weight. That's the Greek word definition of that. Transfer the weight of your anxiety, your burdens off onto God. See your power, folks. Hold on to your peace. Don't give in to your emotions. Adversity and storms of our lives is often the front door that leads to a larger story for our life. Remember, the who is more powerful than the what. Peace out. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you for this time. We thank you that if there's anyone here who was in a struggle, in the middle of a storm, coming out of the storm, going into the storm. Whatever it is, we pray for victory over their lives. We pray for your peace. We pray, see your power to be calm, be still. Let them hold on, Lord. Let them hold on to their peace right now. We thank you for the victory they have in you because of, of your faithfulness, Lord, because of the courage and strength you give us, Lord. We thank you for that victory this day in the mighty name of Jesus. And all the saints said, amen and amen. Well, there will be no Q&A today. We are in our yearly barbecue uh, picnic. We have this uh, outing once a year. I hope that, that, you know, if you have time, get out, you know, and enjoy this beautiful day. And remember, God is good all the time. If you have prayer, if you have any need, Reach, we'll go reach out to us and our, living, our website, livingword.nyc. Uh, we have prayer meetings on Tuesday nights. We have Bible studies for kids, or adult studies for uh, young at heart. So whatever you need, we're here to help you. So remember, God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. Take care.